This video continues our look at the machine learning library for Spark, uh, Spark ML Lib. And we had gotten to the point where we are ready to load in our data set for starting with the stations for the NOAA data. Just to remind ourselves of what that looks like. So we have, this is our large data file that has all the data from 2017. And then we also have this stations file. And so we can less this to see that we have a station ID, a latitude, a longitude, an elevation, and a string name. Now previously, we had loaded this in by creating an RDD and then converting that RDD over. In this case, uh, and that gave us a data frame. In this case, I actually want to use a typed data set and load it directly uh, with the data sets never going to RDDs. So I'm going to make a variable for the stations and we will read, we're just gonna read a basic text file here. And that text file is the one we just looked at. So it's in the data directory and it is called that Control Z. Blip. there we go okay so that's our data file now reading it in that way I get a data set of string I don't want a data set of string I want a data set of stations so I'm going to map every line from the strings over to a station so at the end of this I want to say station with a particular ID, a latitude, a longitude, an elevation, and a name, which will work great once I have those variables. So ID happens to be a substring, and actually for this I can probably save us some typing. We didn't keep the elevation last time. So we can add that in, val elev equals line dot substring. And the elevation goes from the end of longitude, so starting with character 31, to the uh, several characters after that. It turns out there's, there's extras between elevation and name. And so we can stop at 37. We want to trim that and then convert it to a double. And in fact, just because I'm always paranoid with these things, I don't know why I didn't do this with the earlier code, but before I convert things to ints or doubles, I like to, to trim them down. Okay, so now stations is a data set of station, and we're gonna be using that a fair bit for the rest of this example, so I'm gonna go ahead and cache it. Okay. We're mainly interested in the latitude and longitude. And just to see what our data looks like here, because it's significant for the clustering. The first clustering I'm gonna use is only with latitude and longitude, okay? Um, the idea here is we have a whole bunch of stations and we have a whole bunch of data from these stations, but like some of the stations don't necessarily record all the data that we want. So we want to do clustering kind of for regional climate. I don't want to do that for individual stations. As I mentioned earlier, one of the problems is the data for a given station might not be complete. Okay, that would be a problem for us. The other issue that we have is that I'd actually kind of like to narrow things down and have kind of a smaller set of clusters of stations where each you know cluster needs to be geographically, hopefully geographically small enough that it would fit inside of a climate zone but large enough that we have enough data in it that, that it's meaningful uh, because individual stations might have, have more problems with them. So first I want to look at this data and that's actually a fairly uh, simple thing to, to do. I'm just going to pull out all the data and collect it. Uh, so I'm going to take stations dot 
let's see, how about I do a select first, select of the uh, x's are actually longitudes, dot as a double, and then collect those values. So I have a big array of doubles. I'm going to do the same thing for my y values <clears throat> as the latitudes. And then I just want to plot those up real quick to, to see what this looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and import swiftviz2.plotting and swiftviz2.plotting underscore and that should allow me to make a basic scatter plot here a scatter plot uh, x and y are fine as the arrays stations turns out this plot code will be helpful for what we're going to do later because I want to cluster these things and then I will cluster them by the uh, I will cluster them or I will color the points by the clusters they get put into. It's interesting to note that I have updated the uh, SwiftViz2 a little bit so that you can now use log axes but I don't feel like setting the types. I'm perfectly happy with the linear, and so I'm going to only specify the arguments that we want. Fortunately, uh, Scala always allows you to use name types. Let's do three pixels there. And the color for now will be this won't be a very interesting prop plot to look at. No dot. Okay. And if, since I want to do plotting in here, extends JFX app. Uh, Control Shift O to import that. Let's try running it. occurs to me as this pops up that I made the window larger than what might uh, draw nicely. Also, turns out there are lots of stations. It's a reasonably large file. We could actually do a WC on that. So there's 103,000 stations. Uh, so could take a while for this plot to come up. I'll go ahead and close this video here. We'll start the next one with the plot and then we'll work on doing grouping so that we can group together our stations in what will what should be a meaningful way